Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Midday Live with me, AC Benewa Oto. Let's look at our top stories coming up in the next one hour. Residents living close to the Kpon landfill site desert homes due to what they say is unbearable smoke from the facility. We'll bring you more on this development. Chairman of Ghana Education Service, GS, says new education curriculum will ensure teachers monitor progress of pupils at every stage. And in international news, a key military leader in Sudan promises to abide by a power sharing agreement with the opposition. So these and more including sports and entertainment all coming up in the next one hour. Let's now do our very first story. Um, the chairman of the Ghana Education Service, GES Council, Michael Nsowa, says the new education curriculum will be implemented from the next academic year. Uh, will ensure teachers monitor progress of pupils at every stage. Speaking on the key points, he noted the move is part of efforts to ensure students abide are able to compete internationally. Reforms in education comes or happens uh, as and when we feel that the education, the current education system is not meeting the needs of the country. Sure. And uh, the recommendation is that uh, every, education ref uh, every education system should be reviewed um, at least five years. Uh, you know, then you have a major review of about 10 years. Mm -hmm when it uses it for 10 years. So it's, it's, it's as a result, we are following the natural you know, processes of uh, you know, monitoring and reviewing the systems of education. And then we are doing that in Ghana. So this has come, and uh, you know, some of the uh, precedents are that uh, the Sustainable Development Goals recommends that for development to happen in the developing countries, the minimum education should be secondary education. So we are not doing something uh, just because somebody dreamt, yes. The dream was there before the, uh, this agreement was signed at the, uh, with the Sustainable Development Goals. So uh, the, the government set to work and uh, so in line with that, we realized that uh, it should be now and not uh, 2030. No, they, they have set a target by 2030 all developing nations should ensure that their minimum education that they are giving to the youth or the children uh, should be secondary level. So that's how we set out to do this. And uh, to do that, you need to look at the curriculum. What was wrong with the curriculum? And we realized that first thing, we could not compete with the as, uh, as uh, happened with the teams and the uh, what is it? The other one, pizza, <laughs> pizza, and so on, which is international, you know, competition among nations to find out whether, you know, we always talk of uh, preparing children to be able to mm -hmm. compete on yeah. the global market. We go for global competition and <laughs> we fall flat. So all these considerations were taken into account for us to look at. So what is it about this? Re re reformed curriculum, if you like, that would, you know, set the Ghanaian child on that stage to be able to be so competitive with to be able any to child that, coming from, to, say, yeah. Switzerland or wherever. We had to depart from the, uh, you know, the current system, which is what we call objective-based, mm. and to adopt the standard-based curriculum. The standard-based curriculum, um, you need to, uh, you need to ensure that you are monitoring the progress of the children or the performance of the children at every stage. So I don't wait to be easy when the results are released. Then we, we are all uh, crying. Oh, some people <laughs> got the zero levels, percent. Yeah. Why do you have to wait to you know then pronounce that they've got zero percent? What happened along the way? So that is what uh, basically is embedded in the standard-based mm. curriculum. And, uh, and that's why uh, we are reading that Along the line, we have uh, targeted certain uh, levels or points where we want to find out. It's not a national thing that, like BC, that we're going to close and, and look at the P2. 
you are going to you are ending the first stage, what we call lower primary. Okay. Have you uh, gotten all the skills and competencies that is required? Like, you no, know, when we say we use the term competence, it becomes very, very big. At least any child from P3 should be able to read and write. If you, therefore, you need to uh, find out whether the children are able to read and write. At least that alone will ensure that yes, now you can build on it as they uh, go along or move into the upper primary. Meanwhile, a former acting director general of the Ghana Education Service, GES, Charles Ahetu Chega, says the new curriculum will ensure teachers pay more attention to the needs of the pupils. He also spoke on the key points. The, the very interesting shift in the uh, standard and objective um, system is, is that this time round, um, teachers would be required to pay more attention and children will be more engaged within the classroom setting mm. so as to ensure that they get the most of what is being mm. uh, uh, required. Uh, so I gave an example. By P3, every child should be able to read and write. Sure. Basic reading, basic writing, right. basic calculation. So we want to see all of that as evident in terms of where a child has reached by um, P3, okay, by P3. Now, so in primary two is the, uh, let's say, the litmus test stage, where you use to determine whether yeah, we are making progress mm. or we are not. And as he said, um, if the children are not making progress, the focus will be to ask a number of questions. What, what are we looking for? The content domain, is it, is it too difficult for the children? Or then you look at the teacher's methodology, then you look at the children, and then you look at everything. So it provides an opportunity to begin to uh, pay attention to the different components that enables education to be provided for children to get value um, uh, for it. Okay. So it's, it's perfectly in shape and ensures that uh, we are able to get our children to get to the point where we are. Also, for a second week running, the story of the missing girls in Takrade, an effort to find uh, a story of the week. This week, uh, the acting inspector general of the police, uh, James Opon Buana, uh, paid a visit to the family of the victims. Kwachi Afrenyama has more in this report. Last week, as you may recall, the family of the kidnapped girls organized a news conference and raised a number of concerns, including why, in their view, the police had kept them in the dark concerning the discovery of human remains suspected to belong to the girls. Days later, on Tuesday, Acting Inspector General of Police James Opombuenu and a team of police personnel paid a visit to four families whose relatives have gone missing for more than a year in the Sekendi Takrade metropolis. The IGP's visit took him to Takwa to the house of a fourth victim, Ruth Abaka. Addressing the media later, Director of Public Affairs at the Ghana Police Service, ACP David De Clou, said the acting IGP has given his assurance that there will be no objection to calls for an independent forensic audit. One or two of the family members raised that concern and it was made clear to them by the Inspector General of Police and his team that we don't have any objection to that. If they want to engage an independent person or expert to do that, it is, it is normal that you need to confirm what we have. The family of the victims expressed full confidence in the acting IGP. For the acting IGP to move all the way from Accra to Takradi, actually to come and visit the family to encourage us to, I mean, get our report, some of the, our views that we think the police didn't do well with us and other stuff. And you also give us, an, give the family assurance that whatever be the case, they are going to work hard. No single individual has come under bashing over the kidnappings more than CID Director General Mamiti Wadadankwa. But speaking at a program in Accra on Wednesday, she said there is simply no way she's going to resign despite the criticisms. I don't need to resign. Resigning is like resigning from the Ghana Police Service. So the position is not something that I can. I have to resign and say I am no longer 
a director general CID. It is appointment. It's like posting transfer. The four-week deadline the police are set for itself to conclude with a DNA testing on the human remains suspected to belong to the kidnapped girls expires in two weeks. Kwache Afreniama, TV3 News. And in other news, a civil society organization cluster on decentralization and citizens' participation is requesting President Akufado to, as a matter of urgency, move the affirmative action bill from the executive's level to parliament for consideration and passing into law. At a media engagement in Accra, co convener of a group, Ifua Chidi, requested that the process begins as soon as parliament resumes. The passage of the Affirmative Action Bill is expected to accelerate Ghana's effort at meeting Sustainable Development Goal 5 target of gender parity in decision-making by 2030. The bill, which has suffered a number of setbacks for over a decade, was supposed to increase the participation of women in decision-making and also fill the inequality gaps in political, economic and social spaces. Several advocacy civil society groups, including past and present gender ministers, for the passage of the bill into law seems not yielding results. Co-convener of the group, Efua Chidi, expressed disappointment over the bill not having been passed into law after 13 years. After over a decade of actions and efforts by the responsible ministry, now Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection, and other stakeholders, it is quite disappointing that the bill has never been laid in Parliament. We are saying that the President of Ghana, being the African Union Gender Champion and the co-chair of the Sustainable Development Goals, should double his efforts towards achieving these targets by passing the Affirmative Action Bill into an act. She stressed the need for more women participation in decision making. The passage of the Affirmative Action Bill will accelerate in decision making by 2030. We cannot achieve that by mere rhetoric. Women's representation in public service, independent constitutional bodies, board of state institutions and political parties will be greatly enhanced. Programs manager for governance in law and development in Africa, Frank Wilson Boja, won the bill passed into law by first quarter of 2020. What they need to do is commit to it, set uh, timelines, pass it swiftly as possible, at least deadline of next year's first quarter, go five, which talks about gender equality and empowerment of women, emphasizes on the need to have gender equality achieved by 2030. And if we are not passing this bill, we cannot put the mechanism in place, have the personnel in place to do that work on behalf of Ghana. The group says it will embark on a peaceful work across the country starting August 30 in a bid to demand the passage of the bill. The acting director general of the Internal Audit Agency, Ransford Eche, says the protection of the natural resources is a collective responsibility, describing the role of oversight bodies in safeguarding it as crucial. He made the observation at the opening of the 2019 annual Internal Audit Conference in Accra, a report by Zubaida Ismail. Internal auditors from public institutions across all 16 regions are attending the conference which is on the theme protecting national resources, the role of oversight bodies. National resources, be it financial, natural, human, capital resources are under the custody, protection and management of the public institutions. And these public oversight bodies are required to ensure that National resources are safeguarded and used optimally in a transparent, ethical, accountable and responsible manner. He noted the Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 921 and its supporting regulations provide important guidelines to all. Internal auditors work towards improving control, risk and governance through their oversight, foresight and insight rules. They support management in the use, control, 
and safeguarding of our resources. He, however, bemoaned the conditions of service of the country's internal auditors. Condition of service, however, still continue to be a major source of challenge to the development of the internal audit function in the public service. We therefore wish to remind the board, the Minister of Finance, that it, its restructuring effort of the internal audit, the condition of service of the staff of the internal audit unit should take a center stage. The board chairman of the agency, Joseph Winfall, cited fear of victimization as one of the reasons why internal auditors fail to diligently do their duty. The internal auditors are actually employed or on the payroll of the executives or management of these MMDAs. And some have seen worse days ahead. He deployed what he described as the Ghanaian attitude in acting only after the country has been hit by a major scandal. Well, one could argue that most of these oversight bodies tend to undertake what we call post-mortem. So maybe these bodies are doing post-mortem and it's being reported to us and we all become alarmed, disturbed, ashamed and wonder what do we do next. He blamed the media for shifting attention from one issue to another even before results are achieved. The media, which is also part, is an oversight body. But maybe after reporting any abuse or misuse, they will do that for a few days and then think about more exciting things like football or Miss World Contest and so on. Three outstanding internal auditors were honored. Away from that, only 15 million cities out of 102 million cities earmarked for the Takwa Insuayim and Pristia Huni Valley municipalities in the western region between 2012 and 2017 under the Minerals Development Fund was paid. This was reviewed in an investigative report which sought to expose the poor living conditions of residents in the two predominantly mining municipalities. Why is Poverty of the Golden Towns, a documentary by freelance journalist Adam Shrim, portrays the deprivation of the two predominantly mining municipalities. Disparities in disbursements of royalties paid by mining companies to government through the Ghana Revenue Authority have existed over a long period despite the sector's contribution to the country's gross domestic product. To ensure equitable sharing of royalties received from mining companies, Parliament in 2006 passed into law the Mining Development Fund Act 912, following enactment of the Minerals and Mining Act 2006, which sought to control and regulate concessions and distribution of royalties. From 2010 to 2017, an amount of 280 billion Ghana cities has been paid to the government to be transferred to the administrative schoolmats for onward disbursement to the MBF Secretariat for nine mining districts. Findings review, not much has been done with the MBF. And residents living close to the Kwon landfill site and other adjoining communities have deserted their homes owing to the unbearable smoke billowing from the landfill site. The entire landfill site has been engulfed in flames. Personnel from Temafa service have been struggling to douse the flames for the past 18 hours, although they have deployed six fire tenders. According to them, owing to the composition of the site, it will take days to quench it. Despite the numerous awareness creation programs by civil society groups in the country on breast cancer, most cases are reported late. The late stage at presentation uh, of breast cancer cases in Ghana is estimated to be about 67% higher. Health professionals say this is influencing the overall survival pattern negatively. A report by Sarah Paku.
quality and standards. Now we have a whole policy on cancers and breast cancer is one of them. So there's a, a comprehensive policy for cancers which includes breast cancer. So we have to make sure that we have disseminated it to the health workers, to the teaching, uh, the, the pre um, clinical and all of that so that by the time we even finish school we know what we are doing and it's not only for the health workers it's for all stakeholders so that we know how to interact to give the holistic care so one of the presentations is on the policy and it's very important that we know but there are other presentations on science what discoveries have been made and so many very good uh, menu of things they are coming to talk about at this meeting. And it doesn't end at the meeting, we continue. The policy you said is dynamic. Mm -hmm. We know that this policy has to do with the health workers getting abreast with it, what it's saying, mm -hmm. how to yes, go about yes. it. But as a patient, mm -hmm. as me, mm -hmm. breast cancer mm -hmm. patient. We take a break here, more news returns shortly. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Osei. I am going to be your investment advisor for today. Can I get you something to drink? Let's say these sweets are your money, okay? This is how the money goes and doesn't come back if you just keep spending. In future, if you're not careful, you'll be eating your fufu without soup. You wouldn't like that, would you? As children, our tomorrow depends on what you do with your money today. So you need Heritage Fund, a long-term investment for your long-term projects, child's education and retirement. Invest in First Fund to provide the best returns and ready cash in times of need. We can help you raise money for your business or even own part of a company. With our advisory and brokerage services, this is made easy for you. So please, don't do this to your money. Top up your investments regularly at our partner banks or at our offices. So, do you have any questions? Investments advice made simple. Are you ready to move in your remarkable value on beatable location? At last, this is what you have been searching for. Apartments tailored to your highest standards. Affordable housing scheme is giving you two-bedroom semi-detached and three-bedroom detached house for sale at Chopoli Agoto behind city of Shiloh and close to New Airport City and in Sawum Bampasu number two. Pay a cool 95,000 cities for two-bedroom semi-detached and 170,000 for three-bedroom house. Pay a commitment fee of 10,000 cities and spread the rest within 60 months. For more information, contact Forever Estate on 0501-204040 or 0501-204041. See ya. Yeah, Collins. Oh, Baba Gano, Malandi. Eh, Bami Wahabo, Mi Pese Me Eklem, Mi Nyema Nansa. Oh, when you made brush up, Mi Nyema Fa Fa Fa. I'm off. Media, drink good trading and stuff. On one of me have more. Me have me home for a blue drink for two to phones and laptops. Yes, I'm a trade duty or a. I'm a yachty so I was Franco trading enterprise. Masa, so who pay phones to? Who pay laptops to? TV, any pen drive, any external hard drive. Me near my papa dia masa. We're Franco trading enterprise. No more near my air for a year. Yeah, money, money near my no. Me ship in the sea or no. Me clear near my man. Connect FM Watson Traffic 2019. Media General and Connect FM will be organizing the Western Trade Fair. I, Kobna Ochreda Komesa, the Western Regional Minister and MP for Takrade, endorse this program. Come join and make Western Region great. 28 August, 6th September, and a pair 80 Biara. Francis Yaman and Yaragista wear 0245 78 78 86 and a 031 22 91 035. The Connect FM Western Trade Fair is being supported by MTN Momo. MTN Momo, we dare for you everywhere you go. Connect FM Western Trade Fair 2019. A beautiful and a brilliant promoting business and productivity. Oh, 
So business now and banking consultant Nana Otwe Champon is of the view the completion of the cleanup of the financial sector will improve confidence. Speaking on the key points a day after uh, the Bank of Ghana revoked licenses of 23 savings and loans companies and some financial houses, he hoped the central bank will henceforth comply strictly with laws governing the sector. I pick up on the confidence level yeah. that the, re the resolution of the sector um, started with the top level, mm -hmm. uh, that is the Universal Bank. Right. Uh, ideally, it would have been best to do the whole five sectors in one go. Mm. But for the fact that the government had promised that they will ensure that nobody loses a penny, you have to have money before you do it. So first money was uh, earmarked to do the Universal Bank, uh, so far about 13 billion. Next was uh, almost 1 billion to resolve the microfinance. And the governor on more than two occasions at the MPC has said they were ready to resolve savings and loans and finance houses, but mm -hmm. for the money. Mm. Uh, they were asking for 7 billion. I don't know how much uh, they ended up getting. But I presume they had to strike yesterday because now some of the money uh, has come. So now it is, uh, the result will be the restoration of confidence in the sector. For the last MPC, if it hadn't been this uncertainty, you would have seen interest rate come down. But because there was still hanging, people were not sure whether uh, they were safe in dealing with some of these institutions. So the, now that the, the exercise is complete, uh, it means that people know the institutions they are dealing with. Uh, the regulator has also promised that uh, the regulatory forbearances that they had prior to uh, these events will no longer go on. Uh, if they slept on the job, now they are weak. Uh, and we, we hold them to it yeah. that uh, they should do what is uh, expected mm -hmm. of them. Things will change going forward from next month because well. uh, next month Act 931 will kick in. Mm -hmm. And once Act 931 is in, well, once you, you fall foul or you fall below, then Section 123 will immediately so what is be Act applied. 931 that is the uh, Deposit Insurance uh, Act. Very well. So uh, coming after the specialized um, banking specialized yes, deposit that's right, very yes. Meanwhile, a senior lecturer at the Department of Finance, University of Ghana Business School, Dr. Lord Mensa, says there has not been new depositor mobilization contrary to a session by finance minister. Speaking on the key points, he noted what happened was depositors moving monies from microfinance sectors to tier one banks. The mid-year budget review, right. the finance minister indicated that as a result of this cleanup in the banking sector, mm -hmm. there's improvement in deposit mobilization. And I, I can tell you that uh, there's no improvement. The reason why I'm saying there's no improvement is that, you see, the signal on the grounds for depositors that they are coming, they are coming to clean up, you know, savings and loans banks, funds started moving from the savings and loans bank to the banks that were existing. I mean, funds flow to comfortable environment. Mm. So people started taking their money and then they started putting it in the banks that, you know, they think they are in good standing, especially the foreign or rented banks. So, you know, in effect, you will say, fine, there's been improvement in what? Deposit mobilization, but it's not incremental. There are no new deposits. They are not deposits from, from new customers. It's the same funds that is moving up and down within the system. Now. So I would say that we fine. We are, it's an exercise. It's not a confidence that has been built up for people, new customers, to bring their money. And in fact, those who took their money, some of them are sleeping on it. The reason why they will sleep on it is that you see, we 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 want to, you know, um, solve a problem. Now the problem exists in a system. You cannot take for granted the interconnectivity between these financial institutions. If you hold up the banks, those funds that the savings and loans had with those banks obviously will not come. We've got receivership, mm -hmm. all right. Rece receivership promised, you know, Bank of Ghana giving assurance that nobody will lose a penny. But I can tell you, some of the interest rate, 
that were being promised by, you know, Beige Bank, Heritage Bank, were so high that they were not realistic on the ground. After putting all these banks together, right, becoming CBG, the receiver may assess the system, says, okay, fine, you, your interest rate that was promised you was so high, so it can be sliced into two. By that time, these microfinance institutions and then those uh, savings and loans institutions have recorded those investments as assets on their balance sheet. <laughs> now, when they go back to their tables, you realize that because of the reduction in interest rate, those assets have been reduced by right. half. These assets were built on certain liabilities, mm -hmm. which is obligations that they had okay. with some depositors who have brought their money with that high interest. When they come, are you going to tell them that interest rate has been split into two? So now every depositor that comes to the financial institution will be targeting the principal. And it's, it's, a, it's a system and it's a behavioral issue. In other business news, President of the Ghana Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Dr. Nana Apia Dankawoso, says the chamber is adopting measures to prepare women entrepreneurs to benefit from technology improvement programs. Speaking at a forum in Accra, he noted the program is expected to link women to financial institutions to access funding for retooling. The forum was to engage the women on their business needs and challenges. Many of them drum home on the need to access financing from the banks to be flexible and roll out innovative initiatives which can grow their business. Seriously, with the securities that are supposed to be provided, when one is going for a loan, most women do not have that. And so that one alone tells you that women are in some way left behind and we need to support them from the government side, from uh, private sector side and from you know, all perspectives to make sure they take advantage. The chief executive officer of Home Foods, Felicia Chumesi, applaud business women to update their knowledge on new business trends. I would advise that they, they work for some time to gain experience, learn from, have mentors, because it's very hostile out there, especially women in this environment. In a related development, the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry is partnering GAMI and GAMI Law Firm to provide alternative dispute resolution services to members of the chamber who have protracted court cases. The two signed a memorandum of understanding to kickstart the process. Chamber indicated several members have cases in court which is eroding gains of their business. Members have also complained of the slow nature and stressful legal process in solving commercial disputes. The Alternative Dispute Resolution Service, ADR, is to provide an immediate and local seat of mediation for businesses that are unable to get their disagreements resolved on time at the conventional courts. President of the Chamber, Dr. Nana Apia Duncan Woso, said it was critical to engage ADR. In normal cases at the law courts, there is a, win, a winner and a loser. At the end of the day, you see the two parties being separated because one, the other one might, uh, did, not, you know, did not go well with him or her. Now we are resolving it in a more uh, amicable way in alternative disputes resolution which has become a popular way of resolving uh, business cases. A formal strike boss, Emil Short, enumerated the benefits of ADR system. In terms of mediation, it is preferable because it seeks to achieve a win-win situation so that both parties are, are happy. So that in commercial disputes, for example, where you want to maintain a relationship. You don't want the dispute to bring about separation or disruption of your relationship. Then it is better to have the matter resolved by mediation. The CEO of GAMI and Co, Austin GAMI, asked business managers to do due diligence before signing contracts. 
And that's all in business news for this afternoon. Now let's do some other local stories in the Ghana Psychological Society Association of Ghana is calling for more involvement of psychologists in the educational sector. The association is of the view their contribution from policy to implementation will aid the proper development of children, even those with special needs, to reach their full potential. This year's Ghana Psychological Association Public Lecture, an annual general meeting focused on attaining quality education by untying the knotty issues. President of the association, Dr. Erica Dixon, noted the skills of psychologists can be harnessed in supporting the education sector in arriving at some scientifically informed policies. A counseling psychologist and principal of the Commenda College of Education, Reverend Dr. Kwesi Inkum Wilson, expressed concern about the country's curricula, which has been unresponsive to needs such as critical mindedness. It's the creativity, the critical thinking, which at this stage is lacking. Nationwide teachers are being trained on their new curriculum, and much emphasis is placed on critical thinking. They're changing the mode of assessment, and I believe that is where I'm talking about teacher education. Teachers coming out of our colleges of education should be retrained. Head of Psychology Department, University of Ghana, Professor Joseph Osafo, called for attention to be given to the psychological aspect of teacher education. About 1,300 students in schools in Accra, and one in every four is cutting herself or himself. One in every five has attempted suicide. Now this is only in Greater Accra. We are putting together a school psychology program and we think that the Minister, Minister of Education should pick up this. Deputy Minister of Education in charge of Technical Vocational Education and Training, Tivet, Gifti Chum Ampofo, admonished researchers to undertake studies which will inform policies in the educational sector. We wish that they direct their students into research that will benefit the educational sector, our preschool, our basic school, including the SHS, to ensure that we're doing the right things. Well, still stay with us because we have more coming up after this. And the median edition of the Ghana Music and Arts Award Europe has been launched in Accra. The scheme is designed to celebrate the rich Ghanaian culture and to reward excellence in music and arts industry in Ghana and Europe. Europe will experience the best of Ghanaian arts and culture as the made in Ghana Music and Arts Award set sail on its shores. The scheme is designed to celebrate the rich Ghanaian culture and reward diligent Ghanaians within the music and arts industry, both in Ghana and Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, officially, the Ghana Music and Arts Award Europe has been launched. Despite being in its first year, the launch of the awards attracted a lot of interest. Some big names within media fraternity turned up to grace the occasion. It's, it's a step in the right direction. Anything that has to do with rewarding talent and the creativity, I, I think sort of motivates the artists and the people involved in the sense that they don't only represent Ghana in the country itself, but they are also selling Ghana outside. So just to appreciate their efforts of selling Ghana well, it's good to be putting up awards and babies like this up so that they will know that they're doing well and I think that should push them to even sell Ghana the more. We're going to use the same platform to promote more Ghanaian content in Europe, to propel our artists and movie stars to you know, be able to sell their content out there. 26 categories are up for grabs with Artists of the Year as a topmost honor. With music, arts and culture, it's a big thing. This is what has been transforming Ghana out there. This idea came into consideration that at least you should do something to help push the industry. Artists of the Year is going home with Kantan Kamensaka. So you can imagine, it's not just um, an award with a plaque, but an award with a car associated. The main event is slated for October this year.
And that's all we have for you by way of news this afternoon. Thanks for watching. Before we part ways, let's look at our top stories once again. And residents living close to the Kwon landfill site desert their homes to what they say is unbearable smoke from the facility. Chairman of Ghana Education Service, GESS, new education curriculum will ensure teachers monitor progress of pupils at every stage. And in international news, a key military leader in Sudan promises to abide by a power sharing agreement with the opposition. My name is AC Benewa Otu. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Good afternoon.